Welcome back into the Pulse Network. I'm Maggie Bruley here on TPN Finance, joined in studio by Stephen Saber, the CEO of the Pulse Network. Uh, Stephen, what we're talking about today, we're just mentioning, is something that I'm actually incredibly interested in because it's all about Groupon. And I love Groupon. I love all the deal sites that seem to be popping up on a daily basis now. They are so popular. But now there are also some critics of Groupon, particularly Groupon's business model. So what's the debate here over Groupon and the rate at which they're growing? Well, the debate's not really about the rate at which they're growing, it's whether or not their business model is flawed. Mm -hmm. And if you read the article that uh, was in the Harvard Business Review that basically argued that Groupon basically is doomed uh, because their business model it won't, isn't successful. Basically, the, the issue has to do with the accounting that they were doing and how they were trying to show their financials because they're filing for an IPO. And when they were, when they were questioned by the SEC and they changed their financials, it changed the way that they were reporting their numbers and it changed the way that they were talking about their business and ultimately obviously showed a, a further line in terms of whether or not they can reach profitability. So the question became, can they reach profitability? Are they a viable business down the road? And if so, what does their business look like when they become viable? You mentioned that what does their business look like and something that the Harvard Business Review asked is sort of what the business model looks like. Uh, so what does the business model look like for Groupon? Or is that the initial problem that they don't have one really? Well, let's talk bigger than that because I think it's a bit more of a, a larger question. Mm -hmm. Back in the first internet boom, it was all about eyeballs and it didn't, profitability was not an issue. So it was how quickly can you grow? How quickly can you grow your audience? And depending on the size of your audience, we'll figure out the revenue piece later and we'll figure out the profitability later. Now revenue is an issue. So getting the top line growing is important. But in this article, what they're talking about is the fact that we don't know if the bottom line is going to be there. And what they point out very clearly is that if you can't show a line to profitability, your ultimate business model may be in question. And in the case of Groupon, that's what the big debate is right now. Two issues. One, when the economy turns around, will the need be there? I guess three issues. Two is, do they really have staying power and what is it? So is it just simple, is their database really where their value is? And three, if they tried to run it as a profitable business, could it be run as a profitable business? And in this article, they're questioning whether or not that's even possible. As we're talking about business models and growth and of internet companies in general, I'm curious what you think of a company like Groupon, which once it does start to blossom, once it does start to potentially become profitable down the road, more and more competitors enter the space as well. Uh, what will that do for Groupon? Is that something that will bolster it because it now is this marketplace with many companies or will it harm it in the long run? Well, in this, it, it all depends on your business. In this case, I think it's actually going to be an issue because it's all about, you know, barriers to entry are a key part of your ability to grow and to create value in your business. And in this case, it's questionable whether or not there are true barriers to entry in the case of Groupon. Because as more companies are offering this, I mean, now you see every media company is offering a Groupon-like offer. And every database company is offering a Groupon-like offer. So the, what's the true differentiator? What's the true, there is no barrier to entry. If you've got a database, Maggie, you can be a Groupon-like company. Mm -hmm. Question is, you know, what's the size of your database and how big can you be and how good an offer can you get? And so if you can't define, so in the case of Groupon, if you can't build that barrier to entry based on the offers, then you have to build it based on the databases. But if you really aren't creating that true affinity on your database, then all of a sudden, what are you left with? So what you'll probably see with Groupon is that you'll see them transition their business and they'll, start, they'll take this massive database that they've, kit, they've built. The model will still be the same of creating offers, but they'll create a stronger affinity around their business and build that as the barrier to entry, which may or may not protect them in the long run. 